Hello ladies and welcome to the season finale of season one of the Front Burner Podcast. Listen, I just want to thank you so much for joining me these past 27, 28 weeks that we've been doing this. Oh gosh, I have learned so much and I have gotten so many great messages and, and things like that from you guys. So thank you so much. Um, this episode, I actually recorded a few weeks back and um, I felt like God was telling me like not to put it out then, but to wait on it. And so I feel like he's, he's having me to put it out now for you guys. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, I'll get into what the topic is and all that stuff. Just stay tuned. Get your notebooks, get your pens, take some notes. It's going to be a good one. All right, guys, I'll see you after this. Hey, ladies, welcome to another episode of the Front Burner Podcast, where we help mamas take their dreams, passions, and side hustles off the back burner, put them on the front burner, make money, and manage their households. I'm Nikki Willis, a Christ follower, wife, mom of three, and an entrepreneur who started with nothing but my kids' toys and turned it into a six-figure business. I'm a self-proclaimed anti-super mom, and each week I'll challenge you with my stories, tips, hacks, and a little bit of humor to make sure you put yourself on the front burner. Why? because the world needs what you've got cooking. So honey, this is officially part of your me time regimen. Relax, listen up, and let's get started. So let's get into the topic. Is making my business a priority actually biblical? Let's get to it. So before I get started with the topic, I want to tell you a little bit about my background. I am a church baby, okay? I was one of those kids that um, was born in the church, okay? We went to church maybe three to four times a week, um, two times on Sunday, and, um, you know, everything that we did was in the church. We sang in the church. Um, you worked in the church, you kind of grew up knowing that you were either going to teach or preach or serve or sing, and that's how I grew up. Nothing wrong with that. I love my old church, and I love how they brought me up, but as I got older, I kind of understood some, some things differently, and I read the Bible, um, you know, and allowed God to speak to me. That's one of th- the things I want to encourage you to do. Um, make sure that you read the Bible for yourself. I am a Jesus girl, I am a Christian, I profess Jesus, and um, I believe that you should read the Bible for yourself to get an understanding and allow God to tell you what he wants to tell you, (laughs) okay? So, um, being that, you know, I grew up a certain way, um, I always felt kind of out of place because I didn't want to be a pastor's wife or a deaconess or a missionary. I wanted to be, from a young age, I wanted to be a businesswoman. Now, as an adult, I do volunteer and I serve in my church. I absolutely love it. But I knew what my heart's call was. It was not going to be within those four walls, right? It was going to be outside of the four walls. As I grew up, I began to study and um, just allow God to speak to me about what it, what I was thinking, how I was feeling, and why I wanted to be this businesswoman. And as I grew up and, and started my own business and started helping other people with their business, I soon realized that I was meant for the arena of business. I was meant for the area of business. That is how God made me. Once I understood that, that really freed me up in so many ways. Now, there are people that you know belong in the religious sector. There are people that belong in education and entertainment and um, family. There are people that belong in these different arenas. And um, there are seven of them. I can't think of them all right now. Um, 
but you can look it up. It's like the seven arenas and some people call it the seven pillars or the seven mountains, but um, there is an arena of business that I realized that's where I belong. That is my arena. Yes. Right. Um, so with that, um, you know, understanding and I, what I, what was happening was I was being taught by people that were in my arena. They didn't understand, um, you know, the arena of business and that's okay. But I knew as an adult, I needed to understand why I was feeling the way I was feeling as a child, as a teenager. When people would ask me when I was little, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I was saying, a businesswoman. I want to be a businesswoman. You know, I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know what I was even going to be. But I knew I wanted to be a businesswoman. Knowing that I was in a different arena where I, that I didn't fit in. Knowing that something else was different um, caused some self-doubt in me caused me to you know feel like I didn't fit in and um, caused caused me to feel like I was doing things wrong um, and so it essentially made me shy back from wanting to be in business because I didn't think that that's you know I felt like um, you know growing up and what I learned it felt like well that's not where God is. It was all about religion. And it's not. So I'm going to show you guys today just kind of what I learned and um, just a snippet, okay, of, of why um, I believe that you can make your business a priority. And I say A um, for a very specific reason. I want you to hang in there with me. Hang in here with me because um, I'm going to show you something that I think will also free you up from preventing yourself from pressing go, thinking that you're not honoring God. Okay? That's what this episode is all about. If you feel like you're not going to be honoring God by making your business a priority, then this episode is for you. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing that anybody ever goes to um, when talking about or describing like the perfect woman <laughs> um, is Proverbs 31, okay? Which, you know, I love that chapter and um, I think that we should all you know, ascribe to be a Proverbs 31 woman, which is awesome. But I want to specifically look at a few scriptures here that people kind of glaze over, okay? So, in this particular um, scripture, Proverbs 31, honey, did you know that the Proverbs 31 woman was actually entrepreneurial, honey? Matter of fact, not only was she entrepreneurial, she was in real estate, she was in investing, okay? And honey, she was a part of the supply chain. You ready to read this with me? Okay, see? See, I already told. Listen, Proverbs 31 is chock full of amazingness, okay? And um, she's also not a super mom, I'm just saying. Okay, I'm just saying. She's not a super mom. We'll just put that in there. Um, but let's, let's head over to it, okay? So. I said she is entrepreneurial, she's in real estate, she's in investing, and she's a part of the supply chain. Here we go, I'm gonna show you right now. Proverbs 31, verse 13 and 14 says, she selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from afar. Now, see down in number 16, it says she considers a field and buys it out of her earnings. She plants a vineyard. So right there, she's already entrepreneurial. Girl, this girl's in real estate. She considers a field. And she buys it. Okay? Now, how do I know she's in investing? Well, she says out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. So she's taking what she's earned, and now she's planting a vineyard 
which is going to continuously make her money. Honey, when I saw that, I was like, yes. <laughs> yes, right? Like, this girl is smart, okay? So, entrepreneurial. She is into investing, all right? Listen, listen to this. This is more about her investing, okay? So she sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. Then verse 18 says she sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. Honey, she's making money overnight. Yes, queen. <laughs> yes, okay. Oh, I love that verse. So right then and there, it shows you she's entrepreneurial, all right? She's already getting wool. She's got a flax. Um, she said she's like the merchant ships. That means she is producing. She is in and out, okay? She is moving her product. Then it says she considers a field and she buys it. So right there, she's into real estate, okay? She's looking what type of real estate is out there, and then she buys it. Then it says out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. Come through, okay? So now, um, not only has she bought some real estate, now she's making that real estate profitable. And then drop down to 18, is, it says she sees her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. That means she's making money in her sleep. This girl is bad, okay? She is bad. And I feel like we gloss over that. Proverbs 31 woman is a bad business woman, okay? Bad in a good way. She's amazing. Now, I told you she's a part of the supply chain. Now, I haven't told you about it yet. I'm gonna tell you now, okay? So, go on over to Proverbs 31 chapter. Chapter 31, verse 24, and it says she makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. Now, the merchants are the people who sell. So she is a part of the supply chain for the merchants. This girl is all in it, and I am so here for it, okay? <laughs> I am so here for this Proverbs 31 business woman, all right? So right then and there, you can see um, four instances where you can see she is about her business. And that freed me up because, you know, we are not just moms, which are wonderful. We're not just wives, which are wonderful. Um, we're not just aunties or grandmas or sisters. You know, we can be smart business women too. And if you are called to start your own business, honey, yes, you can. You can do it and you can be. She, she shows that you can be in all different types of industries. Okay, she was in real estate. She was in finance. Um, she's in manufacturing. She's in um, textiles, right? And I don't know what those sashes look like. I feel like they were probably fashionable too. So maybe she was in a little bit of fashion too. But that's my version. <laughs> anyway, this girl is the bomb.com. All right. So number two, in regards to making your business a priority, you also might have the question, you know, how do I quit my nine to five or, or how do I even how do I even start? Like, what does the Bible say about me even starting? And I'm gonna tell you, this is my favorite scripture. Not favorite. This is one of my favorite scriptures out of the Bible, only because um, I love the way that I translate it. And so I'm gonna read the way it's written, and then I will read the Nikki translation. So the way it's written is this is Ecclesiastes chapter eleven verse 6 and it says sow your seed in the morning and at evening let not your hands be idle for you do not know which will succeed whether this 
or that, or whether both will do equally well. And I love that scripture. Now, the way that I interpret it is do a little bit of this, do a little bit of that, because you never know which one's going to pop off. Now, that is my Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 6 interpretation. <laughs> now, how does that go with, hey, I still have a full-time job here, or I am a full-time mom. I do not know how I'm going to be able to start this company. And here it is. You do a little bit of both, okay? Maybe you have that nine to five, or you know, maybe you are, you know, full time with your kids um, at home. You're at the stay at home mom season, and you know you can't catch a break until maybe nine at night. Well, then you work from nine to eleven on your business, or maybe you have that nine to five. Um, then you get your five to nine on, honey, right? So you can do both at the same time. Um, you know, write down a list of what you need to get done. Um, having a schedule, having things automated will help. But the Bible clearly says you can do this. You can have your nine to five and you can have your five to nine. And, you know, Make sure your hands aren't idle. You know, are you watching that This Is Us episode that you just can't miss, but you can be writing your business plan or doing a lean canvas? Maybe so. So don't let your hands be idle. Go ahead, get in there. This is the point where you might have to be two, doing two things at once, but you can do it in order to get to that end point. I had to do the same thing. I had a full-time job for quite some time. It wasn't until um, like 2015 when I finally quit my full-time job. I was able to do um, party sitters and real estate because I did two things um, and solely do that and solely have it support what I brought into the household. So you have to have that five to nine and the nine to five and it's okay to do that because you never know which one's going to pop off. Again, that's the Nikki translation. Okay. Um, another thing, I think we also deal with the issue of not knowing or feeling uneasy when it's time to do something new. I, I, we don't quite know, you know, or we, we feel uneasy when um, something is changing and quite frankly you know I just think some of that is just fear of change and we have to get over that we have to overcome that and then also know Psalms chapter 37 verse 23 says the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord and so number one understanding that your steps are ordered okay understanding that he likes your path he makes your path straight. It helps you take that burden of, well, am I doing this right or am I doing that right? Your faith is in God. Your eyes are on Him, not on that path. Your eyes are on Him. Also, sometimes I think we have a problem with assignment changes. Sometimes I think we get too attached to where God has assigned us. At a certain point so for instance you might be super comfortable in your job and maybe not now because a lot of things have changed because of the whole COVID-19 but let's say six months ago you were super comfortable in your job maybe you were even on track for a promotion right and God drops an idea you know for a business and maybe you scribble it down six months later COVID-19 hits and you've been laid off and now you're pouting, you're at home pouting about this job that you've been laid off from, not realizing that that was the end of your assignment. And listen, honey, I don't know who that's for. If it's for you, send me a DM. Um, 
but I felt like that was for someone specific. But maybe you're at home pouting over a layoff or over a furlough, but maybe this is the time that you need to get out that notebook where you wrote that idea six months ago and get to it. Sometimes we get so attached and think that we're gonna be somewhere for a longer term than what God has truly assigned for us. Honey, if that's for you, again, just send me a DM because I don't know if that was for everybody, but I think that was for you. So, um, you know, who is the perfect person to emulate when you're talking about assignments? Jesus. He came to earth, and Jesus didn't live 100 years, okay? He was here on earth for 33 years. And as a matter of fact, his actual assignment didn't start until he was 30. So his assignment was the span of three years. And within that, he was able to do everything that God had told him to do because he knew he had an assignment. And when it was over, it was over. And thank God he didn't pout like some of us do, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, I've been let go. Or I've been, you know, furloughed or I've been this or I've been that. And they didn't treat me right. Not realizing that maybe your assignment was over there, right? Or, oh gosh, my kids don't need me anymore. They're becoming more independent. Maybe that's a sign that your assignment in this arena is over and your assignment is going to change, giving you more room to start your business, giving you, you know, more freedom to take meetings and things like that, right? So if you live a life understanding that um, our life is a series of assignments and God orders our steps, we won't be so frustrated when it's time to change. Okay, that's number three. Number four, this is the one I wanted to talk about. Watch your words. <sighs> Ladies, I think sometimes we get really um, bogged down or fearful when we talk about making our business a priority because you don't want to make it the priority. Notice, I said a priority, not the priority, right? Matthew 6, tells us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. And I think we get fearful thinking that, oh my gosh, if I start this business, it's going to take over my family it's going to take over my life and i won't have any time for this or any time for that and it's just a simple word change you are not making your business the priority the number one priority is god your relationship with god making your business a priority is added to the list of Self, husband, children, ministry, business. There it is. So it's in that list of priorities, but it's not the priority. And so I want to encourage you, if you were not wanting to start because you were fearful about it taking over everything or you or it becoming an idol in your life it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be the priority but it's okay to make it a priority why because god put us on this earth for a purpose for a reason and remember you weren't born a mom you weren't born a wife you were born you with something specifically inside of you to get out to the world. So therefore, you have to make it a priority. Not the priority. You have to make it a 
priority. So I hope that helped free you up a little bit. Um, I know throughout my journey as a believer um, and reading more about what God is telling me about how to be in business, it definitely freed me up. So I hope this frees you up, ladies. Um, if it did, if you like this episode, make sure that you tag me. Make sure you give me a thumbs up. Make sure you give me a review. I would love a five-star review. Um, if you really like this episode, screenshot it for me, post it in your stories, and then hashtag me or tag me and use the hashtags Front Burner Tribe and Front Burner Podcast. All right, ladies, make sure that you are pressing go, that you are taking yourself off the back burner, putting yourself on the front burner, making your business a part of the things that you prioritize and press go. You have to get it out there. Thank you so much for joining me on the Front Burner Podcast season finale. Listen, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Um, I felt so great recording it. And honey, I was speaking to myself. <laughs> um, listen, if you enjoyed it as much as I did, I need you to do me a favor. Um, I need a review. So you can head on over to the Apple Podcast. Um, search for the Front Burner Podcast and leave me a review. That is the best way to let other people know about my podcast. Um, get them hip to it, all that good stuff. Also, during the summer, um, during the summer months, if you want to know what I'm doing and be connected to the Front Burner Tribe, the best way to do that is to sign up for my mailing list. So head over to NikkiWillis.com. Um, click the subscribe button and you can put your email in and I will email you every week and I'll be telling you what I've got going on, what I've got planned. Um, I'll be telling those people on there the new date that I'll be coming out with season two, which is this year. Okay. I am not done by any means. Okay. Um, so just make sure you sign up NikkiWillis.com, click on the subscribe button and you will know everything that I've got going on. Finally, I'll be doing some coaching this summer. So um, if you want a coaching session, um, if you want a group coaching session, reach out to me. You can head over to NikkiWillis.com and click on work with me. All right, ladies. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, don't forget your Front Burner Tribe merch. It's all on the website, NikkiWillis.com. Click on merch. You can get your Front Burner Tribe merch right there. All right, ladies. Have a great summer. I will see you soon. Bye.